So the Bible lets us know, in order for our sins to be blotted out, right, we must, con uh, we must be converted. We must repent. What does it mean to be converted? What does that mean? Give me that, right? What does it mean to be converted in the book of Psalms, right? Because the Bible lets us know, how shall we be converted, right? Get a question. My sister, what does it mean to be converted? It means to repent, but how, okay, how, how does one convert? How does one repent? I can't hear you. What'd you say? Give your heart to Christ. Give your heart to Christ. All right, so when you give your heart to Christ, there's statues and commandments that you must adhere to. Right. Right? So it's not just you give your, oh, how do you do that? Right? Like if I tell you, if you're my daughter, and I say, in order for you to stay in this house, you must give your, 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 your heart to Christ. There's, there, there, I must tell you, no, don't come, uh, uh, come home at, at this time. Right? Don't dress in modesty. Right? These are the rules that God set up for his house of Israel, his people. So it's more than just giving your heart to Christ. That's one step, but there's statues into it. And we're going to read that. Read it. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Come on. Bring it the up. Law the law of the, the law. So we're talking about our father, the Lord. You believe in the Lord, right? Guess what? He's your father. He's your father. No, 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 no. No, I'm not talking about he's everybody's father. No, he's your father. That's right. He created you to be special. But guess what? Most of our sisters That's and our men are not behaving special. I want you to listen, sister. Most of our women and men are not behaving special. Jeez. So when you say you believe in the Lord, you know that the Lord is your father. You are to walk and behave like you are of the Lord. Right. Special, which most of our people are not doing. Read. The law of the Lord uh -huh. is perfect. It's perfect. Converting Please. the soul. What? Converting the soul. So the Bible says we must be converted. Repent. Right? So in order to give your life to Christ or to believe in Christ, you must be converted. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, uh -huh. making wise the simple. So guess what? This Bible is considered to be wise. But when you adhere to it, you start keeping the laws of God, you start converting to it, it becomes simple. It becomes simple. For my, uh, for my sister, real quick, give me modest apparel. And for my, uh, my brother, my brother, there's an attire that you must wear. The attire that you have on is her attire. And this is what you have to be converted from. We all have to be converted. We all do. We all have to change. All of us. We. My sister, the, listen, listen. The book of 1 Timothy, uh -huh. chapter 2, verse 9. Come on. In like manner also, the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So my sister, are you a sister? You're a woman, right? So the Bible's talking to you. What's your name? I can't hear you. Keisha. Keisha. My name is Arod. Keisha. The Lord that you say you love says you must adorn yourself in modest apparel. Right. Right? So, in that being said, do you think you're in modest apparel right now? No. You it are? Doesn't matter what you it, it, it matters. It, it don't matter what you wear. It matters how, how you carry yourself. Alright, let's read that again. It's so you like saying, Keisha. Like Keisha. 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 You say you love the Lord, right? Yes. Okay, let's listen to what the Lord says. Not what you think, but let's listen to what the Lord says. Keep. We, Keisha, I want you to kiss Keisha. We out here for you. You my sister. Is well, that's good. Why? Because it, it's, it's listen. No, I'm, I'm not judging you. Your father's letting you know what you ought to do. Right. Wait, we. It's all right. In like manner uh -huh. also. In like manner also. That women adorn themselves. So the Bible says, Keisha, my sister, that the Lord says you ought to adorn yourself in modest apparel. Right? I'm not judging you. Your father's judging you. Teach. We. In modest apparel. In what? Modest apparel. So you can be beautiful, Keisha, but you must be beautiful in modest apparel. Meaning clothes that's not showing or revealing your your uh, your precious things. Right? A tight skirt is not modest apparel. Right? Your nipples out. All of these things that are an abomination unto God. A lot of our people say they love God, but they don't want to adhere to what God says about them. Teach. Give me uh uh um uh Psalms 100 and verse 5. My brother, my brother, let me ask you a question. Brother Eric, can you come in work? I can't see. Brother Eric, we dealing with our sister, right? I just showed my sister the laws of God about modest apparel, right? Do you agree that, or do you believe that modest apparel in our community is being uh, 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 adhered to? Do you think our sisters dress immodestly as a people, or they, they just immodestly, right? 
Right? Yeah, some of the best models and some of the don't. But for the most of, for the most, when you come outside in our communities, our people are dressed, our sisters are dressed what? In modest. I'm gonna show you the destruction of being dressed in modest. Right? Read. Psalms chapter 100 verse 5. Come on. For the Lord is good. Uh -huh. His mercy is everlasting. Come on. And his truth endureth to all generations. Is that Psalms Psalms 105? Yes, we did it again? Three. Psalms 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Uh -huh. And his truth endureth to all generations. So the Bible lets us know that his truth endures to all generations. Right? So we're going to go through the truth to explain that immodesty, right, is destroying our communities. Give me Deuteronomy. Give me the law on we should not prostitute our daughters to become a whore. Right? Now that's Leviticus. Leviticus 19. Right? In verse uh, 29. You know what I want? Right? So the Bible lets us know that the attire of our sisters is very important. Right? Because most of our sisters say I can dress how I want to dress, like Keisha said. Right? But the Bible does not promote that, my sister. Teach. Right? right? The Bible does not promote that because of this law. We. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Bring it out. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Do not do what? Prostitute thy daughter. So with prostitution, you know a fireman by his attire. You know a police officer by his attire. Teach. Right? So you know a prostitute by their attire. So God says, thou shalt not do what? Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So the Bible says we ought not to prostitute or be in agreement with our sisters being a whore, dressing like a whore, right? Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. So God says when our sisters do that, the land fall to whoredom. How so? How? Because when, when a man sees you dressed in modesty, right, he's going to do what? He's going to try to spit game to you, but he's not going to, give me Hebrews, he's not going to marry you, right? He's going to maybe put some babies in you and leave you. Because what man in his right mind is going to marry a prostitute? Teach. Nobody. But in order for us to build a righteous community, it must start with a righteous family. Right. But if the sisters are not dressed in modest, if our men are being uh, 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 distracted by the immodesty of our sisters, guess what? The land is going to fall to hoarder. Right. So you said all your sisters, all your sisters want power. Right. Well, here's your power. Do what God says, and you and that's your power right there. Right. Right. When you dress modest, you are in the power of the Lord. That's right. Read. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. So the Bible says marriage is honorable in all. But no man is going to, in his right mind, is going to marry a prostitute. He's just only going to lay with her, get what he wants out of her. Am I right or wrong? He's only going to lay with her and get what he wants out of her. And guess what? Now this woman is left with that spirit of that man. Now this woman is bugged out. Now this woman has no hedge, no protection. Now when the next man tries to rear her into the laws of God, she going she gonna, she gonna to bug out. Right? She's going to resist because ain't no man, well the last man I dealt with, the last man that slapped me, left me with two kids, I don't trust the men no more. So it goes both ways. Our men need to stand up and be leaders of their communities See, that's right. and adhere to the laws of God. Right. Same way the women must stand up and be leaders of the community by adhering to the laws of God. You know what I'm talking about. We. And the bed undefiled, Come on. but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So the Bible says that God will judge our people. How is God going to judge our people? Listen up, Keisha. We st hey, hey, Keisha, we still out here for you. Hey, All right? Give me um, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Right? How is the Lord going to judge those that are in the midst of whoremongering? Right? Adultery, fornication. My sister, what's your name? My, Selena? Helena. Helena. So I got a question. Say it one more time for me. Helena. Helena, I got a question. Right, so God says marriage is honorable and all, correct? You believe in God, right? Okay, and, but then it says whoremongers and adulterers, adulterers, God will judge, right? How will God judge the whoremonger and the adulterer? Because of the way they're tired, because they're disobedient. Okay. Because of what the Bible says about whoremongers and, you know, adulterers. That is correct. But what I'm asking is, what does that look like? When, 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 when a man steps out of his marriage, 
How, what's, what's one way that he can get judged by breaking the laws of God? Adultery. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. adultery is the sin, yeah. right? He's, 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 uh, um, the wages of sin is death, yeah. correct? Right. So what is, what does it look like when a man steps out of his marriage? What can happen to that man outside of, okay, he's in the wrong, but what can happen physically to that man? He's no longer under the protection of God. Say one more time. Because he's no longer under, because he's disobedient, uh -huh. he's no longer under the protection of God because of the fact that he disobeyed and then on this on the God. Okay. Marriage. Okay, very good. Let's, I'm going to read it out the Bible. All right, I'm going to show you the physical, what it, what it looks like physical, tangible. Right? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Bring it on. Also, every sickness. Every what? Every sickness. So the Bible says every sickness. Read. And every plague. And every plague, such as what? STDs. Right? Read. Which is not written in the book of this law. So all sexual transmitted diseases are not written in this book of the law. Right? Read. Them will the Lord bring upon thee uh -huh. until thou be destroyed. So the Bible lets us know that one of the payments for stepping out of your marriage, right, is diseases. Right, sexually transmitted diseases, right, even death, right, because the man that you, uh, the, the, uh, the, the man or the woman that you laid with perhaps can come back and destroy you, kill you, but why? Because you are in sin. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Family.